Hey, this is Crafty here. Welcome to the Are You Past the Beginner Stage video for bass. Are you past the beginner stage? Let's find out. All right, let's get into this bass stuff. So are you a guitarist that plays bass like me? If so, then you might wanna watch the guitar video on the same subject, but rest assured, this video is not identical. Bass is very similar to guitar in lots of ways, but it's quite different. So if you've been playing bass for a while and you're not really sure if you're a beginner, well, all of these fundamentals are part of your foundation as a player and it's really important that you don't skip any of these steps. So stay tuned to all of these list items. And if you feel like that you're definitely not a beginner, well, use this video as a recap. So yeah, if you are a beginner and you are definitely learning a bunch of things from this video, well, whatever you do, don't try to do too many at once. Just do one at a time. Slow and steady wins the race. Easy, easy. Stick with the plan. Okay, here we go. So I'm getting into the list now. So the first on the list is you have to own your own bass. That might feel like a bit of an obvious one, but You'd be surprised a bunch of people out there would be like, yeah, 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 I'm a bass player. Oh yeah, so what sort of a bass do you have? Um, mm. I don't know. If you can play a few things on the bass, but you don't own your own bass, well then you're still in the beginner stage. So go out, buy a bass. And so with owning your own bass, you need a carry case with it because if you're taking it from A to B, then it's just a safer, more solid option. If you're a double bass player, or if you have an acoustic bass, well then perhaps this next thing isn't as important to you, but if you're an electric bass player and you don't have an amp, well you'll need an amp, because otherwise... It's not very loud. So, yeah, get yourself a bass amp. Crank it up, and... Annoy all of the, I mean, please all of the neighbors with your bass practice. <laughs> okay, this next part of the checklist perhaps isn't make or break if you're a beginner, but I would definitely consider having a screwdriver, having a rag, having some spare strings, just a bunch of things that are going to help you keep your actual instrument in good nick. Okay, so next on the list, how well do you know the actual parts of the bass? What types of basses there are? And also, do you know the names of the strings? Also, the different types of basses that you can get. Can you identify which types of basses are there? And have you played a bunch? Because they all feel different, they all sound different, they all look different. So, for instance, this is one of the most classic basses out there. It's a Fender jazz bass, and there's other types of main types of Fender basses, but there's also other big name brands out there that you should know if you want to get past the beginner stage. How many famous basses do you know? Famous bass players. I can name a few right now. And it wouldn't necessarily have to be famous just bass players. It could just be, say, your favorite band. What is the bass player's name in that band? So if you don't know many famous bass player names, then you're still in the beginner stage. So get learning. Okay, so the next part of this checklist has got to do with tuning. Can you tune a bass? Can you tell if you're out of tune? If you can't tell if you're out of tune, and if you can't tune a bass, then you're still in the beginner stage. There we go. If you don't have one of those clip-on tuners, I suggest buying one of them. There's also just tuning apps that you can get on your phone. There's really no excuse for being out of tune, so get tuning. Okay, so next on this list is warm-up techniques. Do you ever do any? Do you know that any exist? Well, I've got my hands up here because usually what I'll do is I'll get away from the instrument first and just get the muscles that I'm about to use kind of geared up, ready for action. So, I always do all of that stuff, and you can do that for quite a while. Okay, and then the next thing is to actually play something that's just not a song, because you're not ready for a song yet. You've got to do a few things just to get 
your fingers on it comfortable in the spots of which should be the correct fingers to use too by the way because I see a lot of people they, they might just play a song like this like whereas you want your first finger to belong on the first fret second finger to belong on the second third finger on the third, fourth on the fourth. And a lot of bass players don't like using their pinky, but trust me, just stick with it because then you've got everything that your body has to offer to make great music and not have it be quite so tricky and a chore. So I'm just gonna play something. Did you notice that I wasn't changing my fingers over that each finger was just belonging on a certain fret. So it's the best way to do a warm up, which is to just get every finger to go through the process of belonging in a certain spot and then practicing on a few strings. And then you can do that further up the fretboard as well. So give that a go. Okay, so a bass player's job is generally to just play one note at a time. Compared to, say, a piano or a guitarist, they will play more than one note at a time. Chords. And as a bass player, what we can do is we can highlight more than one note at a time. Sorry, one after the other, not at a time, because we're bass players, right? So, for instance, it might be something like this. Now that is called a major arpeggio. It's just the one and the three and the five from a major scale. We'll get to scales a bit later. And there's also a minor version of that. Minor is the sadder sound, which is a one, and it's called a flat three, five. The major one's more common, but it would be fantastic if you could do both. I would consider that you have passed the beginner stage if you can play both of those types of arpeggio patterns. Next on the list is different ways of using your right hand. Of course, if you're a left-hander, then it's your left hand. But yes, so you got your two fingers here. The, what I do is with my thumb, I kind of rest it on the pickup, and then I just use both fingers. But if you are a guitarist, kind of like the way that I, I started on bass after I started on guitar. So I would use my crafty pick. Actually, in those days, I didn't have a crafty pick. But I, I just kind of played the bass like I would a guitar, but just separate notes rather than many notes all at once like I would on guitar. So. Now there's another way that bass players play is just using their thumb. That's okay as well. So if you can't do one of those or if you can only do one of those, you're still in the beginner stage. So get practicing. Mm -mm -mm. Can you read bass tabs? They're not too hard. It's basically just numbers on lines, which is frets on strings. And so that was Seven Nation Army by the White Stripes. So yeah, as you can see that it's the seventh fret that I'm playing here on the A string twice. And then it's my pinky on the 10th fret of the A string back to the seventh fret. Now, they're all on the same line because they're on the same string. But then it changes to the E string where it goes 10, 8, 7. So there you go. If you've never read bass tab before, that's how you read it. Go check out a bunch of other bass tabs. There's only about a billion on the internet to check out. So no excuses. Go check out some bass tab. Now that's a really great segue right into the next part of this checklist, which is can you play a bunch of riffs or bass lines? So, Seven Nation Army, that's one of them. I don't know why I played it again. Here is another one. Here's another one.
Now, while I'm on the subject of riffs really quickly, I'll just plug my other video, which has a ton of these bass riffs. So link below, go check it out. Coming up next on this checklist is can you count in and can you count along while you're playing? So if it's a bar of four, then you basically need to count four numbers at the speed of which the beats will be occurring once it starts. Okay, so here's an example. One, two, three, four. 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 Notice that I wasn't always playing one, two, three, four, one, two, you know, at the same time. So it's important that you have a really good concept of counting. If this whole counting thing is something that's kind of new and foreign to you, well then you're still in the beginner stage, I'm afraid, but that's okay because this is a really important fundamental that will help you groove along with a drummer and other people as a bass player. You'll understand the beats and everything. So it's something that you need to practice, but it's going to be awesome once you get it. And all you got to do is practice and you'll get it. So practice. Okay, we're almost there through the checklist. Just a couple more. This one is, can you play entire songs on the bass? For instance, it might be a song called Stand By Me. bass line as I just played it there continues over and over and over again until you get to the end of the song so that is just I guess you could call that a riff or just a bass line either way if it's a simple bass line song in its entirety or if it changes you have to be able to play a song from start to end and you know what I'm just gonna up the ante you have to play say a handful of songs before you pass the beginner stage so if you can't play full songs yet get cracking okay so lucky last on this list is not slap technique. That's kind of above beginner standard. It is being able to play the 12 bar blues. Now, being able to play the 12 bar blues, there's a lot of levels and degrees to how complicated you could make a bass line to play the 12 bar blues. Levels. <laughs> I would consider that if you can't play a 12 bar blues then you're still a beginner because if you go to say an open mic or a jam night or if you are playing along with a guitarist or a guitarist and a drummer and they say hey can you play a 12 bar well then that puts you in beginner status you've got to know what a 12 bar blues is basically there's just 12 bars and it follows this little formula which is not too hard to be able to follow all right so i'll quickly play an example of a 12 bar blues which is just only using root notes and open strings so we'll do it in the key of a one two three four third bar fourth bar last line That is probably the most simplest way that you could play it. I'm just going to do a kind of more complex one, which will be something to aspire to if you're still at that level. So here we go. A one, two, three, four. showing off a little bit sorry not sorry <laughs> like I said it's something that you can aspire to so get cracking on your 12 bar blues and that way you'll be able to successfully pass the beginner stage <laughs> so hooray you've passed the beginner stage or have you was there still some things that you needed to tick off Either way, they're foundations that are really important, like I said at the start of the video, nothing to be feeling like you need to skip over. Because if you do, then I guarantee it, there'll be a time in your life later where you just think, oh damn it, why didn't I just practice that easy thing, damn it. So if you feel like, nah, all of this stuff was pretty easy, well then, hey, congratulations, high five. What you need to do is watch my next video, which is the next steps video for bass past the beginner stage. So check out that video. 
But actually, just before I go, did I forget anything? If I did, if there's something that would be perfect for this beginner level based video, then let me know in the comments below. But actually, the very last thing, just before I go, I have a free ebook to offer you for free. Did I mention it's for free? It's called, actually, how good are you? Yeah, so playing bass, we each have an individual journey that we're on, a musical journey which has specific goals. And we have to, at times, sooner or later, we have to do that brutal self-analysis, that critique of where am I up to on this? And from where I'm up to now, where am I going? And if you're not really clear on where you're going, then it's going to feel like you're chasing your tail. You're not going to feel like that you're achieving what you want to achieve. Yeah, so... I'm quietly pretty pumped about this ebook because I give you the methods of how to figure this stuff out. I let you know the action steps that you need to take. So what are you waiting for? <laughs> Just download it. It's free. Actually, how good are you? You'll be able to answer that. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. My name's Crafty. Check out the other videos as well on offer on this subject and more. And I'll see you in another video very soon. Catch you later. <laughs>